Hey Grokites, today we're gonna grok anxiety. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, anxiety is the most common mental health disorder in the United States. Record numbers of teens in particular are feeling pressure to achieve, having trouble sleeping, having trouble eating, and showing anxiety-binding behaviors like nail-biting, smoking, and the use of recreational drugs. I have lived with and suffered from anxiety for pretty much my entire life. And even though I grew up as an anxious person, I didn't know that other people were feeling this way. I felt really alone. And I still feel a tremendous amount of shame about my anxiety. And as I raise children who exhibit their own range of challenges and anxieties, I can't help but wondering, did I do this to them? Genetically, I know I did. I mean, it's all of your genetic fault what your kids turn out like. But also, it's not. We pass on genetic predispositions, we pass on coping mechanisms, and my kids see me biting my nails, and they see me straightening picture frames, and they see me touch things three times, and we talk about mama's anxiety, and we also talk about mama's obsessions and compulsions. So besides the nature part, what is the nurture part of this? I took a hard look, and here are the ways that I, and possibly you, may not realize that we are increasing anxiety in our children and the people around us. Number one, food. Are you sure you don't want to eat that? Do you want some more of that? Maybe you just take one more bite. If you don't eat all of the food on your plate, you can't have dessert. Here comes a choo-choo, choo-choo. Do you see parents doing this? I see parents doing it all the time. And sometimes I admit, I have done these things. We obsess over food from the time our children are born, possibly without even realizing how much anxiety we are producing around it. So many moms reach out to me for breastfeeding advice, saying that their babies are born more hungry than other babies, they're sure of it. That's literally not even possible. But this obsession with feeding our children enough, it continues through toddlerhood, through tweenhood, and even into adulthood. We count vegetable servings, and we buy expensive vegetable pouches, and we try and hide broccoli and things so they won't know we're making them eat vegetables. We harp and we harp and we harp about food. And kids can tell when you are constantly on them about food. And for a child who is predisposed to anxiety, this kind of fixation on food and weight can become very anxiety provoking. So what can we do? For starters, stop equating your child's size, be they lean or plump, with how much they eat. Stop comparing what they eat to what other kids eat. If your kid's eating a lot of junk food, put your foot down, set boundaries, don't give them access to foods you don't want them to eat. Is it easy? No, but it's on us to not add to our children's anxiety about food. And also, don't spend your time talking with other parents about what a bad or finicky or fussy eater your kid is. It makes more anxiety for you too. Number two, manners. When my kids were toddlers, I made many people on the internet very angry with me because I said that I don't enforce pleases and thank yous. I simply model them. People flat out accused me of being a crappy parent who was raising horrible, spoiled children. I was told to trust that my children would imitate polite behavior by seeing polite behavior. So avoid the urge to call your child out if they miss a please or a thank you. Speak to them privately or read books about politeness and manners. It makes children anxious when you constantly ride them about their manners. Imagine if someone followed you around at every party you went to, making sure that you said please and thank you and excuse me when they thought you should say it. It would make you totally anxious. Guess what? It makes kids anxious too. And just for the record, my kids are very polite and they say please and thank you. I'm sure I make them anxious a lot of different ways, but not this one. One small victory for this mom. Number three, achievement. I was raised by two teachers and I went to very academically motivated schools my whole life. I'm a product of the busing system of the 70s and 80s, where I got up very early in the morning to be put on a bus to go to a school in a very nice neighborhood so that I could have opportunities that were not available in the neighborhood I grew up in. I'm very grateful for these opportunities, but I also know that so many of us have become fixated on our kids being the best, the top, the first, the first to walk, the first to say their alphabet, the first to laugh, the first to crawl, the first to understand fractions, the first to do their times tables. I know this is part of normal parent conversations, but I had to start avoiding having these conversations because you know what? They made me anxious. It makes kids anxious too. Kids have ears, you know, they hear how we talk about achievement. They hear that we talk about how their sibling is great at math. They hear our anxiety about achievement and they see it everywhere in our culture. So how can we stop this? Don't engage with other parents, especially in front of your kids, about achievement for achievement's sake. Seek out parents who have kids with similar interests as yours and talk about the things that are enjoyable in your kids' lives. 
The things my friends and I talk about are negotiating Dungeons and Dragons requests, uh, navigating a world where everyone has a phone, finding out how kids with special needs can be incorporated into the larger community. Frankly, I just got tired of schmoozing with parents about whose kid was best at something. I want to foster less anxiety about achievement and focus more on individual accomplishments of my children. Number four, constant narration. This is going to make people really mad, but do you know what makes me super anxious? When people are constantly narrating things. For babies and for children, it's really not necessary to have a constant running commentary of everything that's going on. I promise, it's not. For sure, talk to your children. It's so important to talk to your children, but they don't need a constant running commentary like, look at that car, it's blue, blue like the sky, the sky has the sun, the sun is brown, the sun is mega. It's too much, stop, it's making me anxious, making everybody anxious. I really think it is. We all need to back off from this notion that children need to constantly be taught things. They learn a lot. They learn by touching, by exploring, by moving their body, by being held. They're learning all the time. The notion that we need constant stimulus is anxiety provoking, and it's become the new normal for us. Sometimes there are quiet spaces. We don't always have to fill them with words. I'm trying to dial back the conversation and just let moments be with my kids. We're all learning a lot from it. Number five, fun. Woo, fun. This may sound really dumb, but do you know what I have found that makes anxiety go away, even for short periods of time? Fun, 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 fun. Running and wrestling and swimming and cuddling, seriously. So much tension gets diffused for me and my boys when we find like a, a fence that we want to climb or, or a place we want to run or a contest we can come up with that allows us to be physical and laugh a lot. Physical contact is soothing and it can dispel a lot of anxiety and even depression. I dream of a world with less anxiety for me and my kids, but it's a constant struggle for me. I still bite my nails. I live my life at a frenetic pace. I'm anxious a lot of the time. But what I've found is that the more I mature and the more I learn about myself and my kids, the best thing I can do is to not be so anxious about it. I know so many of you suffer from anxiety. Please share your comments below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. See you next time.